Hi everyone and welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to teach you how to make stifado and it's a very popular Greek dish that's really special actually. We like to make this for special occasions and um, it's a Greek beef and shallot stew. I'm going to take you over the ingredients and show you how simple and easy it is to make. So we're going to need some beef and I have this cut into nice big chunks. I got a piece of chuck roast beef and then I cut it into these big chunks right here. Olive oil a little bit of red wine vinegar, beef stock, but if you don't have beef stock, you can use water or vegetable stock. We're gonna need some sugar, black pepper, crushed red pepper flakes if you like, a little bit of dried oregano, salt, tomato paste, canned crushed tomatoes, some chopped garlic, we have a cinnamon stick, some black peppercorns, a little bit, a few uh, cloves, two bay leaves, and then we're going to have, of course, our shallots. And we're going to begin by browning our shallots a little bit in our pot. I have my pot really nice and hot over here, to which I will add about a half a cup of olive oil. And if you feel like you can't keep up with the ingredient list, I always post the link down below. And the recipes are very easy to follow on DimitrasDishes.com, so look for that. So we're going to begin in the same pot. This is the good thing about this recipe is that it's all in one pot, and that's makes it super easy. We're going to put probably half of our shallots in here and we're going to cook them for about five to seven minutes until they're nice and caramelized and soft. So these are nice and golden and caramelized. I'm going to put in the last batch and cook these as well. So you wanna make sure that they get nice and golden caramelized marks around, and they're gonna get slightly soft. So make sure the smaller ones take them out a little earlier than the big ones because they cook a little faster. And then they'll continue cooking in the stew once we add them towards the end of the cooking time. But they smell fabulous. If you can smell this, it's just incredible. All right, so our onions are ready. And what you're looking for, again, is a nice golden color all around. You don't want them to get too soft because they will continue to cook in the stew later on. But you do want to lock in and release a lot of that flavor that they have. And you do that by um, cooking them like this in the oil. Now we're going to use the same oil to brown our meat. We're going to do this as well in two batches. And if you're cooking in a smaller pan, then do it in three batches. But you never want to overcrowd the pan because then instead of browning, it'll kind of steam and then you're not going to get what you really need from this. So it's just going to take about a minute on each side for the meat to brown. And you want to do that on like a medium high heat. That's one batch, now we're going to do the second batch. Alright, so this looks good. You want to make sure, you, want, you may want to get your um, goggles to put on while you're doing this for this putting out lots of oil, but I'm just kidding, you don't really need that. Now I'm going to add some uh, garlic in here and I'm going to saute it a little bit to, until it gets soft with this meat right here. And I also reduce the temperature underneath the pot and I'll add all the rest of my meat in here. It's nice and brown. Now one thing to note is um, I love onions and this is one of my favorite dishes growing up. It is actually my favorite, at all time favorite out of all the foods um, that my mom used to make. Fada. I love onions. The onions is actually my favorite part of it. Some people don't like onions, and if you don't like onions, you can definitely cut these up and slice them up so that way they make more of a gravy and less of a, they don't have to be whole in there. But the onions are the characteristic part of this dish, so give it a try. <clears throat> so in your supermarket, if you don't find the shallots, you might find the little baby pearl onions. Those work well. You might want to use maybe like double the amount or put as many as you like in there. But use whatever you can find, whatever is easy. That'll work just fine in this recipe. So now we're gonna add our, a few tablespoons of red wine vinegar. 
just like two. And that'll also help deglaze the pot. And we're gonna need a little bit of beef stock. Maybe about a cup. Just maximizes the flavor in this dish. If you don't have beef stock, you can use vegetable stock or even water, not a big deal. Then we're gonna add our tomato paste. One big can of crushed tomatoes. If you can't find crushed tomatoes, go ahead and get any tomatoes that you can find chopped or whole and you can just puree them in the mixer, in the blender. Just gonna give this a nice stir. Put in the aromatics, a little bit of salt. A little bit of black pepper. I like my food a little bit on the spicy side, so I add a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. If you don't like it spicy, you can totally leave this out. Now, because of all the tomato that's in here, it's really acidic, and you want to cut the acidity with a little bit of sugar. Between half or half a teaspoon or a whole teaspoon, you can kind of taste as you go later on. And if you need more, you could add more. It definitely doesn't make it sweet, but it does cut a little bit of that acidity that tomato adds. And then we're gonna add a little bit of crushed oregano, dried oregano. I'm gonna get that in a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of water, about a cup and a half, just to cover the meat completely. I'm gonna bring it to a boil, and once it boils, I'm gonna cover it, I'm gonna lower the heat to a simmer, and let it simmer for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, until the meat starts to get soft and the sauce thickens really beautifully. And then at that point we'll add the onions, but I'll show you what that looks like as soon as we get there. All right, so once it's come to a boil like this, you just wanna reduce the heat to low so that way it simmers. And we're gonna leave it at a simmer for about an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes and I'll show you what, what that looks like as soon as it's there. Okay, so the stew has been simmering for an hour and 15 minutes, and it smells amazing. I don't know how I have the patience to wait for this to be ready, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I don't know when you don't have a choice. The meat has begun to soften, and it's beginning to thicken really beautifully. Before we add the shallots, what I like to do is kinda take out the bay leaves, kinda fish out whatever I can, the bay leaves and then the cinnamon stick. If you can get it out, if you would get it out at this point. And then you could also actually at this point taste the seasoning and see if it needs some anything like salt and pepper. There's going to be a little bit more sweetness coming from the shallots, so be careful not to add any more sugar unless it's really strongly acidic. And that is perfect for me. But sometimes if you need a little more salt, you can go ahead and add it at this point. I'm going to add my caramelized shallots. And I'm not going to stir them in, but what I am going to do is I'm going to kind of shake the pot a little bit so they can settle. So don't stir them in, otherwise they can break and fall apart. And you don't want that. You want them to be nice and whole in there. Then I'm just going to continue to let this simmer covered for about 30 more minutes, 35 max, until it gets thicker. And then the shallots are completely soft and cooked. And then it'll be ready to serve. So the stew is finally ready. 30 minutes is all it took for the onions to be completely cooked through and ready. The sauce has thickened beautifully. And the smell in here, I can't explain it. It's just, it's just, just the smell of loveliness. It's really, really delicious. You can even smell the onions, actually. It's so good. How nice and thick it's become. I don't know if you can see it. The onions are literally falling apart. So you want to be careful when you're scooping this out. Once you take this out and you put it in your serving dish, take it out very carefully so that way the onions can stay together. I'll show you what it looks like in this bowl. Now you can serve this with some um, roasted potatoes. Uh, my lemony potatoes will go really nice with this. You can do a mashed potato on the side with this, some rice. Um, I'm having, um, we're coming out with a very delicious uh, Mediterranean rice pilaf with vermicelli. 
look out for that video. It's coming out really soon. That would go fabulous with this. But even just some nice, hearty, crusty bread. Perfect. It would be perfect with this. So I'm going to take this out into my bowl. My favorite part of this is the onions. So I'm going to put lots of onions in my bowl. Now you can, add, you can also garnish this with some chopped up parsley if you like. Totally up to you. Look at the color of the sauce. Isn't that beautiful? And again, it's all done and ready in, about, in under two hours and all in one pot. So you don't have to transfer from like oven to stove top. Beautiful. Let's cut a slice of this nice bread. Let me show you how the meat just falls apart and melts. That's exactly how you want it. You want it to be really soft. Look at that. So I used um, a chuck roast for this, but you can definitely go ahead and use a leaner cut of meat because it does absorb a lot of flavor from uh, the sauce, from the sauce and um, from the onions while it's uh, simmering. So this is, you don't need an expensive cut of meat for this recipe and that's one of the best parts of it. Super flavorful and definitely economical and fits a really nice, feed, it can feed a really nice big crowd. Let me take a taste. That tomato sauce is very, very good. Taste the onion. Sweet and delicious. Give this a try. I'm going to post the link down below. Again, you can find all these recipes and more on www.dimitrosdishes.com. This recipe and hundreds more. Um, leave a comment down below. Let me know what else you'd like to learn how to make. And I'd love to show you how to do it uh, my way. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.